Here I'm shaping two boards that are gonna make the middle stringer. And the reason I have to shape them is because the two outside pieces, this will make a lot more sense once I take you a half mile into the woods and show you this nice structurally secure bridge that I'm putting together, is because it's a 12 foot spance I have to cover. And I have two 12 foot six by sixes that are gonna be the main structural beams. And I didn't have anything that long for the middle, so I'm taking this stuff that I milled with my chainsaw and I'm gonna just sister them together. It'll make a little bit more sense once I get out there. Just gonna throw this in here. It has to do with carburetors. If you have a some kind of an engine that's bogging out on you and it won't stay running, sometimes all it is is you just gotta change the position of the carburetor. And it happens a lot, and a lot of people don't know this, and they freaking like it's nuts. This is a huge tip. So like I did here, I just put this zip tie on here. Just kind of lift it up. See when I push it down, it changes. It's just something to do with the float or something. And I let it go, it goes up. That's got to mess with the idle a little bit. So that's all it is a lot of times. It's got to change the position of the carburetor. Here's where I am right now with the build of this thing. It's going to be 12 foot long by four and a half foot wide. And I have two of the I have the two outside stringers I guess you'd call them they're really like whaler boards but I have those two on the outside they're five they're six by sixes and they're 12 foot long and then my middle stringer here I'm getting ready to dig out so that I can put that in and then I'm gonna level everything with that right there and it, since it's four and a half I only have a four foot um, level so I'm gonna use the torpedo level on that stick that straight stick so this is where i am getting ready to dig this out and then since the water is moving in this direction i'm gonna i'm not gonna do any overhang when i do the decking i guess i guess you know we'll get to that later there's not going to be any overhang with the decking but what these pieces of angle iron are for right here is i'm going to put six of them into the ground I got two that are, I got four that are three foot long and after I get everything nice and level with my level right there I'm gonna put them in the sides and just bang them down first I'm gonna drill holes right here and here so I can nail them and I've got this this thing is so freaking handy for drilling through steel it's freaking it's great and I got a uh, two foot ones for the middle stringer. This board right here is four and a half foot long. And what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it underneath. I'm gonna screw it to that whaler stringer and that whaler stringer so that it'll support where I sister those two together instead of doing a scarf cut. I just screwed it together there and I'm going to put that up under, it's going to go up underneath and make, kind of hold everything together. And here's the other side of this. There's my hammer, my big, um, big maul I'm going to use to, once I get all this nice and level, what I'm going to put these in the ground with. And it falls towards me, but I still want it level that way it's got the bottom side nice and level as you can see there and the way i did i just kept on messing with it just messing with these three until they all lined up real nice and pretty and i wanted them pretty low because when i put the decking on the decking is about an inch and a half or so high just wanted it about at grade on each side of this so that would work out nice i'm getting ready i'm getting ready to go do that side now I'm going to come back here and just double check this and then go back there and double check that. Just got to kind of keep messing with it until you have that on both ends. I have this high side nice and level. I just did that side. Now I've done this side nice and level and I'm getting ready to marry it by putting that board on the underneath like I was talking about earlier. Here's where a lot of people might get messed up with this stuff. I did have a clamp and I had it attached to the four-wheeler, but it came off somewhere along the way. So, I don't know. So I just went ahead and improvised. 
but you always want to have a clamp for something like this. I mean, I'm a real big clamp person when it comes to this stuff. I've built entire piers from the first piling to the last copper cap by myself. So I know how to do this stuff without a helper. But I just use that bungee right there to kind of hold it up because my clamp fell off somewhere along the way. I'm just using that to hold it. Just false work until I can go ahead and tack it on. Prepping all my decking boards, I'm using this um, this lumber that I milled with my chainsaw. And I went ahead and I made, I had nine foot pieces. And I took a little bit, a little bit over nine foot pieces. I took a little bit off each end with a chainsaw and made them so that they were just just around nine like perfectly and i put that underneath so that you know i wouldn't have to worry about a whole bunch of nonsense when i was cutting it with the chainsaw just to make it easier and what have you put that scrap board underneath and then i made each one around they're all exactly the same length like four and a half foot so i have a teeny bit of overhang when i yeah, they're right on four and a half, all of them. And now what I'm doing is I'm routing them. I'm routing the edges just to, just to make them look a little prettier. Especially when you're doing with a chainsaw. You really got to think about the thickness of your blade. When you're trying to make exact cuts like this. It's really important. Even with a small circular saw or jigsaw. Just gotta kind of keep that in the back of your mind eventually you won't even have to think about it anymore but if you're first starting with doing any kind of carpentry work you gotta think about that stuff in the beginning a little trick when you're routing weird lumber like this that you you know pretty much made with a chainsaw when you're routing it what you want to do is you want to do your first pass and you always go from left to right do your first pass up there and then you can bring it down like this and do it again boom and your cup which is basically you want your cup upside down and when i say cup it's the rings you want your cup pouring out when you lay your decking on the stringers because when it when it dries or whatever whatever the whatever might happen if the cup the rings are going like this it'll curl like that as, as opposed to it trying to come up and rip the nails out of the stringers on the edges i've got everything laid out the way i'm going to want it to go some of them i had to flip like this 180 degrees just to make my gaps and everything nice and homogeneous and what i'm gonna do is i'm going to the first two i'm going to put on is going to be that one and this one and then i'm going to put these two middle ones on and i mark the tape where the centers of those will go as you can see right there and the reason i did that just to just to make it easier when i'm out there so i don't get get my spacing or anything messed up and I measured 12 foot on each side from there to there and from there to there just to make everything was correct so that is where I am at this point and I'm getting ready to um to load start loading this stuff up and traveling it the uh the half mile hike into the woods and what I'll do when after I after I set these two that I'll go on the outsides or top and bottom of the of the bridge is I'll put a I'll put a nail in right here and I'll put a nail in that one as well in the same place and I'll run a string line from there to there so that when I'm setting the decking, I can just press the edges up against it so I know I'm straight. I've got everything loaded up and I kept a mental note on how I loaded everything 
so that when I offload it, I will be able to put all the appropriate pieces into their designated spots. And I just kept like a, you know, like a little mental note. And don't forget, whatever you do, don't put more than 22 pounds on this luggage rack. So I got the decking laid out and I was gonna do a string line from right there, that edge to that edge, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put the Eastern Shore eye on it and just eyeball it and feel it. And I haven't screwed it down yet, but, and I also, I, um, you can see she's nice and level. Those are the, those are those pieces of angle I was talking about. I put those down. I got six of them in. The two on the edges are three foot. And the one, the ones I have on the middle stringer, they are um, like two foot or something. I mean, I caddy cornered them. So like one is, one's like on this side of this beam. And then that one is like on this side. And it's the same here. See, that's like on the inside of that uh, six by six. And then over there, it's on like the outside corner. I just got the decking down. I still have to put a couple more screws in the decking, but it's more or less a complete project at this point. I mean, when you got a serious flood coming through, you know, it comes from this direction. And it'll wipe, it'll wipe something like this out real quick. That's why I made the lip real small here. So just, and it's got nice gaps so the water can flow up through just to make it, um, make it more sustainable to catastrophic flooding, which does happen around here quite a bit. But All right, and she's working good. Got it up on there and no issues whatsoever. Lots of room on each side. Very happy with this build. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.